Now the preparation time is over, and I'd like to start the judge test for the 14th Yoso Cup here. The motion for this judge test is that this House believes that the EU states should ban ultra-nationalist far-right political parties. And I'd like to invite the Prime Minister to open your case within seven minutes. Please come up to the front. Here, here. Exclusive idea or ideology never made society poor, Mr. Speaker. That's why I'm very proud to propose this motion. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about um, learning to, to rebel. First, I'm going to talk about what is the context of this, rebel, uh, this motion. And second, I'm going to talk about why the government has, or the EU states should have this justification to ban uh, those ultranationalist or who are far right political parties, Mr. Speaker. Then, I will uh, I want to explain, but on my So firstly, about the context of this motion, right? So of course, the context is EU, EU state in the first place, especially that France, Australia, and so on, because those states have enormous you know, amount of immigrants in the first place. Right? And those countries, in, within those countries, that there is ultra nationalist, and also the ultra nationalist has the power in the political arena and has you know seats in the political arena, Mr. Speaker, right? You know, this is the context and also the definition in the first place. Right? Sir. I'm sorry. And so, Mr. Speaker, in this, in this recognizing those contexts, the problem is that those ultra-nationalists are, you know, jeopardizing the immigrants in the first place. Uh, Mr. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so how do you define the ultra-nationalist party and how to distinguish the ultra-nationalist party yeah, from yeah. other parties? Uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, so we examine that the ideology or the doctrine that whether they care only about the benefit of their country, own country, and they never care about other country, uh, the immigrants within, from the other country, in those situation, we judge that this is ultra nationalist and far right political party, ladies and gentlemen. And then, so we think that in the context of this situation, uh, they, uh, the immigrants are receiving the harm in the first place, right? Because they have. You know, the ultra nationalists have the antipathy towards immigrants and also they reject or exclude immigrants in the first place. Uh, because that by excluding or imposing the burden of economic recession on the immigrants, that those ultra nationalists can get the vote for the citizens in the first place. And they are mobilizing the antipathy from the citizens, Mr. Speaker. This is a problem in the first place. And for example, you know, in France, that Roman people are excluded in the first place, right? And it is you know, criticizing from the international society that it is human rights abuses are, you know, the international society think that. So that's why many society, many states are criticizing those excluding in the first place. This is a context, right? So why, secondly, I will talk about why the government has justified, the states should have justification to ban the Russian nationalists from the political arena, Mr. Speaker. Two, three reasons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, one was exclusivity in the first place. Because they never, they think about, only think about the benefit of the only own country, Mr. Speaker, but they never think about other countries or immigrants from other countries' benefit in the first place. I think those things should not be allowed in the, uh, in the first place. Because, Mr. Speaker, that politics in the first place should secure the diversity within the political arena, and also the politics should reflect the every single citizen's opinion in the first place. And more than that, the immigrants, for the immigrants, it is difficult, uh, you know, to be considered in the discussion, right? So that's why those Im exclusivity should not be allowed in the first place. And, you know, the reason is that ultra nationalists are, you know, existing by maximizing the benefit, by mobilizing the anti of the nation, of citizens, and to care about the immigrants are completely mutually exclusive in the first place, within the doctrine or, you know, and so on, of the ultra nationalists. That's why this is crucial, exclusive in the first place. And we think that there is a present existing that 
In the first place, in the third score, that there is a separation of the reference uh, between the religion and the politics, Mr. Speaker. The reason is the religion never care about the citizens. They, you know, simply care about the God is the first priority for those religious communities. That's why they never, you know, compromise in the discussion. They never, you know, compromise. That's why in the third score, those separations are. <laughs> done in the Sarah score. This is the present existing. Right? And also, maybe they may say that, you know, the other political so, party have the exclusivity, for example, prioritizing that the one issue and so on. But there is clear distinction between the other political party but also nationalists, right? The ultra nationalists never care about immigrants at all. This is a clear distinction in the first place. And second I'm sorry. And secondly the second reason is also the harm on the immigrants, right? So you know and I think that those EU states are the only actor, the only unique actor to secure the immigrants. And in those situations, those are, should be secure from those only an actor. For example, you know, in sales scholars, we are banning the exclusivity of religion and so on, the religious community to exclude those believers, even though they have the different or contradicting doctrine or contradicting identity business the religious community, right? That's why if they are the new actor, we should secure those immigrants in the first place. More than the Saudi, about the EU states, Mr. Speaker, this motion <coughs> said that the EU states, right? And what is after as of the EU, right? EU thing, uh, we think that EU is after, you know, to allowing, allowing <coughs> free movement and they banned exclusivity that in the first place, ah, right, please. And they try to achieve that the democratic process within the EU, as a whole EU in the first place, and also in the mutual, much cultural values are respected in EU, within the EU. And that's why, and especially, you know, the EU states should respect, uh, should respect immigrants, should, should ban the international <coughs> issues, are, please. Uh, okay, yeah. so uh, cons considering the context that British national parliament is hated by citizens in the England or UK, we say there is no necessity because there is good check and balance because of the discussion in the yeah. city school. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> gentlemen, we think that those check and balance never are in a function in the sales school. We think this is a problem we face today, you know, in the first place. And last year we're going up to, you know, the pre battle. Maybe opening opposition has tried to say that. Or oh, those activities will be underground and radi <laughs> maybe radicalized yeah, yeah. Or so far. Yeah, 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 speaker, yeah. we don't think so. That there's a prison existing also that Ku Klux Klan, Ku Klux Klan, Ku Klux Klan, Mr. Speaker, even though they are banned in our society, but they are not radicalized. They cannot be radicalized because they are cracked down in the society, Mr. Speaker. This is, the, you know, case study in the first place. And also, in this motion, the <coughs> nationalists cannot be radicalized after an eruption in the parliament. So ladies and gentlemen, we see that you know, there is just a legitimacy that the state bar you know, those with the nationalists and especially in the context of the EU. Thank you. The speaker spoke for seven minutes and fifteen seconds. And I'd like to invite the leader of opposition to introduce your case <laughs> within seven minutes. Please come up to the front. Here, here. In the nature of the EU, EU needs to prioritize all the various kinds of discussion in their nation, right? So as long as there are the political groups, we can identify those groups. But if there are no group of that, that we cannot identify that. So we cannot tackle or there are no counter discourse yeah, yeah. Of, against that group. Yeah. So we believe that as long as there are political groups, there should be uh, as they, they uh, uh, there should be ex should exist in society in the EU. And there and as long as uh, uh, they exist, we can we will avoid that harm. That is why we oppose the motion. Firstly, we uh, 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 in my speech I have three elements. Now, uh, basically, first, the, uh, uh, in terms of nature of EU, why it should be, uh, it should be, pro uh, it should exist. It is not the different from the hate speech in Europe. And second, why the ultra nationalistic 
political groups should be included in the political discourse in, in that society. And third, the, uh, after the proposal, the, we will we see the radicalize radicalize the political groups or radicalize the political ideal and ideology in the in Europe. Uh, so and that's much worse, we think. Yes. So uh, let me start. Before, but before that, I would like to talk uh, about the previous speech. First, the, he said that the uh, basically the ultra nationalist idea is very harmful. But firstly, uh, we think uh, as long as there is a counter discourse, we can uh, mitigate that radicalization itself. And so, uh, as long as there is a possibility to de-radicalize that, then we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, first, we don't. Uh, we don't. Uh, ma uh, that doesn't matter. And first, and oh, and also, he also mentioned that there are the immigrant per political group, in, uh, Mr. Speaker. So if so, there are the also the po good the discussion against that political group and others. So and and uh, and what and and what's more, and uh, uh, it is the context is totally different from the Europe in 1930s. There, the ultra nationalist political party are not supported by the majority of the member in the EU, Mr. Speaker. So as uh, as uh, but there are less support in the political group, we can uh, we can uh, include uh, that discourse also in in political party. So uh, uh, and so it doesn't it doesn't stand to begin with. And secondly, uh, that uh, so and also the, he mentioned that, that there are the religious party, for example, the religious group cannot be um, can, cannot be uh, convinced in political group, uh, political discourse. First, that there is uh, also uh, there already exists the uh, no uh, the Christianity a uh, Christian political party or the other religious party already exists and even they make uh, administration in for example Italy or other other country in in Europe. So it is uh, the thought, uh, that even if the, they are they are conservative, they are not likely to be uh, convinced uh, against religion. Uh, they, uh, it does that's worse because uh, uh, because uh, they can, uh, because. Uh, there are the good possibility to uh, to uh, to mitigate that, and and, and even if there are a tangible harm based upon the very radical idea of uh, of political group, that we we, are, we have the clear line that they, uh, we can ban the practice for as, as we ban the hate speech, and that even they are, even if there are harm, they are for example another actor like the NGOs, the co uh, the actors from uh, public officers from uh, from the from the nations can work. Uh, to uh, to prevent that the po practices beforehand. So we think that, is, uh, that we do not need to ban the political groups itself. So, sir, yes, ultranational parties are actually aiming to deprive the right to express their idea and that accept accept diverse idea from a lot of minority groups in the EU. Don't you think that you are ac actually against those kind of democratic idea? We don't think so, but, but because the, in the EU we are currently ban the hate speech, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah. So the, it is so, the, we can the, so, we can we uh, we can ban the practices of the, the expression of that. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. At, but uh, the, as long as there is political group, they can they can get, have or they can possess their political ideas, so, and which is very very important for them. So we need to prioritize them. So, so uh, from my speech, uh, for first point, uh, in the nature of if, if you, we think the the, the in the EU, uh, the every person and every individual group, uh, uh, regardless of their races or their nations or their religions, they have the strong right to uh, to uh, to make speech, and they can uh, in and the EU uh, prioritize the diverse discourse in the community. Why? Because that they uh, uh, because uh, they have the various kinds of people that uh, uh, and that they they believe in the democracy. That they, uh, it is very important for them to. Uh, to discourse about that. Here, so, here. And, and, but we think the political group, uh, the existence of political group itself is totally different from the hate speech in two points. First, the, the, uh, the hate speech is somehow very, very harsh uh, expression. That is practice, Mr. Speaker. And the political party, on the other hand, is existence, right? So even if that kind of speech from the political Sir. party is harmful, that we can prevent that practice itself. So we do not need to ban the political group because they are just existence. So because they have just possessed their idea on their mind. Sir. No. And second, why the ultra nationalist idea should be also included in the discourse? One, because the, we think the in a political group, the accountability and uh, check and balance system can work and, uh, and properly in the democracy. Because uh, the, if the, that idea or that uh, polit that political ideology is too uh, unacceptable, then they will not be elected in the society. So 
the, the, the radical party will, uh, will modify their idea in a more the liberal one as a process of democracy at the time of the election passed. So, uh, as, as we see in the case of India, we have uh, we we see we saw the case uh, the very uh, religious radical party get uh, can, be ch can be changed in the more liberal and more uh, acceptable party, Mr. Speaker. So we think that, uh, that including itself is very beneficial. And two, and we need to guarantee the freedom of association for even for them because as, as a member of EU, because uh, the first the uh, what we uh, we as a democratic society we need to guarantee. The what uh, the what you think should not be limited, Mrs. Speaker. But even if that um, uh, even if that uh, uh, even uh, even if in the case of the ultra nationalist right here, we think if they are exist, we can identify that and uh, as the objective to uh, to criticize or uh, to criticize or uh, don't dislike. So the counter discourse against such group can can work. Uh, understandable. So we think that in this uh, in this context, uh, the, count, uh, the uh, accountability can work as long as they exist. And thirdly, we uh, if we ban that, that that kind of idea will be under underground as an illegitimate idea. And if so, we cannot check the Turkish or harsh by the hate speech by from that political member uh, for a member of that group. And we cannot check and we cannot guarantee the safety for that immigrant. So we think that can work. Thank you. Okay, so now I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to extend your case within seven minutes. Please come up to the phone. Here, here. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, from the seven minutes from the pre previous speaker, we couldn't once hear an explanation of why we positively need these kind of, kind of views yeah, in yeah. our society, ladies and gentlemen. They said that check and balance is going to work and therefore they're going to have a place. But there was absolutely no analysis on why they should exist, Mr. Speaker. And with that alone, I think we can't win this debate. But what I'm going to analyze further as a Deputy Prime Minister is one, why we think that uniquely these ultra-nationalistic parties are parties which share the ideologies which try to harm free discourse, ladies and gentlemen. So the uh, check and balance system itself is a target of these parties, ladies and gentlemen. With that, we think they should have no place in our society. On top of that, I'm going to uh, then tell you a bit more about EU, ladies and gentlemen. The European Union, ladies and gentlemen, why uniquely as a multicultural body which admits free movement of ideolo uh, ideologies and cultures and people shouldn't embrace people who say another race shouldn't have any kind of dignity in my land. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, uh, and this is a case from the opening government. Now, before going into any of the positive materials, I'm going to give a couple of rebuttals. Firstly, this really a uh, minor point about how we can't define what multi uh, like, um, uh, ultra-nationalist parties are. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, we don't really think that it's important for us to define it. We think uh, like some, some parties clearly are um, ultra-nationalistic and right-wing, and we think that states also always make arbitrary distinctions on characteristics of groups. Like, most, uh, like there is no clear definition of what terrorist, terrorism is, ladies and gentlemen, but we characterize uh, terrorism, ter terrorists on the behaviors and the ideologies we say put out in the public. Also, most states uh, uh, have a definition, or they have their own definition, of what an anti-social group is, and we think states can always make these kind of um, distinctions. Now, second rebuttal is to the idea is that, well, the, like, just speaking isn't an action, therefore there's no harm, therefore you can exist in society. Ladies and gentlemen, we think it's, uh, in the first place, that the existence of parties as a group is a form of violent speech, ladies and gentlemen. It's nothing different from hate speech. Because when you are a political party, it means you are, uh, uh, it means, one, that you, ha you have a lot of people sharing the same ideologies, and you as a group, as in, gr uh, uh, in the hundreds, 
saying that you are not a member of my society, therefore you should be kicked out, you should be, be given no support from the government, and we think that is just as, about, about, just as violent as a saying that these stupid Turks should, um, should get out of this country or we will kill you, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the same as hate speech. So with that alone, we, we say that these kind of existence should be banned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no, sit down, I'll take you later. Um, let's move on to the uh, analysis about why we think these parties try to harm dialogue, ladies and gentlemen. Like, Mr. Speaker, because they have told us that because they're checking and bans through dialogue in the, in the parliament, things are going to be all right. And then they, they told us that, well, because of this mechanism, these parties will change their attitudes, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, what we say is that if they change their attitudes, we, uh, we think they, then they can actually come into the society uh, and have a discourse. We don't ban uh, relatively uh, um, nationalistic um, parties, ladies and gentlemen. So we, we think these parties already exist. We don't really think that you have a need to, uh, to actually include very, very far right um, parties in the parliament in the first place. So we don't really think that uh, there is a necessity. But on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, this course doesn't work, and that is for three reasons. No, sit down. Like, one, Mr. Speaker, these parties themselves no, don't have the motivation to talk with other parties, ladies and gentlemen. No, sit down. Because these are the people who say, uh, for, uh, because they have a God-given right superior to other immigrants, they should, have a, uh, they should have a place in the society, and therefore other people should go out. Ladies and gentlemen, they are... They are uh, they try to threat other people, uh, threat you immigrants are. to go out without really being, uh, without having any kind of discourse. They try to uh, kick them out through power, ladies and gentlemen. On in that case, we don't really think they're trying to talk in the first place. Does it down? Also, we think that in front of the existence of such parties, the immigrants were relatively weak economically, like in most of these states, immigrants have a small economy compared to like the natives, ladies and gentlemen. These people, I don't really think they can have. They are. They have the courage, big enough to say, stand up and uh, talk to these uh, like ex, not ex Soviet, but like uh, communist parties to say, I, I don't like you because they are the people who say, if you come in front of me, we will physically harm you. We will, we want you to uh, kick out of this country. We don't really think that uh, um, there is much discourse. People, weaker people, will be scared scared out so that they can't really talk out and therefore uh, uh, this course is harmed. Yes, sir. So after kick out that, that the, two for, uh, the two radical uh, ideology, uh, ideology from social discourse, how do you deal with such a two radical ideology in society which is remaining that? Ladies and gentlemen, already ladies and gentlemen, we think that the ma vast majority of people don't deal seriously with stupid Nazi ide uh, ex-Nazi ideologies. We don't really think that is a problem. Also, we think people, sure. note it down, are clever enough already to say these people are Nazis, therefore we don't have to, ta ta to deal with them. What we, are going to, what we are arguing today is whether or not, given that people sh have no, uh, uh, no willingness to deal with it, and also given that these parties themselves don't have any willingness to deal with our ideologies, they should exist. And we have given you enough reasons why they, don't, why they shouldn't. Now, let's talk about EU, my second point. Because, ladies and gentlemen, EU is a party, uh, is a political entity which em embraces multiculturalism. Mr. Speaker, multiculturalism isn't just having different cultures living next door. It's about ha trying to uh, compose a, a view, uh, ha having a discourse, and compose a, a, a policy which, uh, which is concerned to the equal respect of every other, other culture, ladies and gentlemen. And in these kind of situations, we don't really think that one single party saying that you sh uh, like our ideology is to kill another party, uh, another uh, cultural group, sh uh, uh, fits into this multicultural ideology. Ladies and gentlemen, so what we have been basically told you from opening government is that given that there is no willingness from either side to talk with the other party. There is no need to deal with it. And just by having these kind of parties, it is harmful to uh, some people. It is just the same as hate speech, given that it is a group trying to kick out and kill other people, exterminate from their borders. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we win this debate. Thank you. The speaker spoke for seven minutes and eight seconds, and special thanks for sakurai yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd like to invite the deputy leader of opposition to extend your case with the seven minutes. Here, here.
So the only condition com coming from Sakurai san actually is that they are very dangerous they, they, because they have so much experience within the, uh, include, include, including within the political party. We don't think just as an idea, just and if that condition is, we, even if we consider all condition coming from Sakurai san, we still think, we still believe that going ban it all together go, makes makes them more radicalized and end up being you know disaster. We, that's why we're very, very proud to oppose the motion. Okay, maybe my maybe my argument will be counter will be a one form of counterproductive argument to the to the entire case of the government side. So I don't have any refutation, the specific refutation to the previous speaker. So <coughs> okay, so basically I'm gonna talk about one thing. First, well, one thing, why this you know the ban go together, ban the association of those people will you know radic radicalize those people and lead to the disaster. And secondly, why that's so harmful for the people for the people on the ground, especially especially the immigrants that they are trying to protect. So, firstly, so under the CSGO, as my great great leader of opposition already told you that a lot of checking balance system exists and they are perfectly working. For example, my old partner already told you that India, PhD, which is a radical Islamic Hindi group, so sit down. So Hindi groups are actually moderated. Moderated. It takes so long time because of true negotiation between the between the people within the political parties and of course the counter discourse exists. And that's why it takes a long time, but actually we see we think and we see we see the case that actually successfully, you know, moderate and make make you know rethink about their ideas, right? So we think it takes a lot of time. We concede we more than happy to concede that, but we successfully, you know, supervise and supervise and check them. And secondly, even if they have tangible harm to the Turkish immigrants, we're more than happy to increase the number of police, increase the number of increase the number of office workers, and more than that, more moreover and more importantly, we have you know so the international criticism from NGO Human Rights Watch or the EU EU or what's that EU Court or the EU Supreme Court will criticize and stop that, right? We we don't think that's you know the problem actually exists, and this is this is a, this that's why we we are saying that status quo is fantastic, and we don't have to take this proposal. So moving on, why after plan radicalize them? Three reasons. Firstly, of course they have they already have incentive to gather gather with the people who have who share the same same idea. Those people originally have incentive to you know. Originally have incentive, but at the point they enter enter so, into the community, right? We, they don't lose the motivation. Of course, we uh, they yeah, don't lose the motivation. It seems they, they it seems that they they agree with, but more just just remains and lose the lose the, sorry sit down, lose the place to voice out. That we think this more radicalized. And secondly, the ban it ban it means the government has special power upon them, right? Because the government think that those those political parties are so so fearful or so powerful that we can't brought that we can't brought to our social world, right? We, uh, we think this is a so intimidating the people and government has special special taboo upon those people, right? Because the government are actually banning them, right? So because just they are very you know we a lot of people are afraid, a lot of people a lot of people are intimidated, right? So in this case, government actually have. Uh, Special taboo upon them. We think, and empowering the taboo on on the, on the political parties. We think that's how we think this this further exacerbates the motivation within the within the people of the political parties. Why is that? Because firstly, we think those people are very you know very happy to have special power given by the government because they actually they are do, they actually they are doing actually they are doing you know just empower and what they are doing, what they are doing is. Something that is so you know so great, that so powerful that people so powerful, right? So those people will be incentivized more, that more. We think that's further you know further radicalized. And thirdly, thirdly, more importantly, as the contention coming from Sakura Aizan, that they are supported by the God. Their human rights are given by sorry, sit down. Their human rights are given by the God, right? This and given by the God and God, and a lot of Turkish 
of course, for the sake of Turkish immigrants or immigrants, for the sake of immigrants, we are banning the government are actually banning EU states are actually banning them, right? So in this case, those people mobilize the responsibility, responsibility that they can't, you know, operate within the social sphere or public sphere into the into the people of Turkish immigrants. Yeah. We think that further <coughs> exasperated the hatred, to, hatred those the, those people's hatred to the mo mobilized Turkish immigrants. We think further radicalize those people. So, okay. Even in your paradigm, hate speech is banned. Then how those kinds of believers in those national parties can actually satisfy in your paradigm, even if they cannot do any discriminative idea? Firstly, they, actually they are, they are able to voice out, right? Actually they are able to voice out so, and develop, represent the diverse shame. opinion. And maybe, ha, ha, maybe want to become a part of a discussion, maybe that's you know, they are they are actually able they are actually able to represent represent the my, even if they are minority, but they can they can actually you know they can actually represent at least and we think that's enough. So what why this is so problematic? First, sorry, sit down. Firstly, you know, more is, we can't first the consequence first consequence is that they we can't identify after taking after, after taking this proposal. Why? Because. We already told you that there's accountability at the moment, and accountability at the moment, a lot of people are, are able to actually supervise those people because they are in the, the political sphere. We think, we think that's fundamentally important because they must, they still, as I already told you, those people still have incentives to continue to operate, and we don't have any check and balance system work because they are, un they are going, to, they going to go to underground, and we can't, you know, Officially voice out, right? What they are going to do is going to underground and trying to intimidate a lot more people, more, more people continuously, more people continuously, and because of the incentivizing those people the, by taking this proposal, this incentivizes the people rather. And second, secondly, more importantly, that because we can't, you know, identify and actually empower this, empower this political party, a lot of immigrants are actually more afraid of it, are more afraid of it, right? Because we empower those people, we can't say that, we, we say, we say that those people are so powerful that we can't grow their eyes. With that, we oppose. The speaker spoke for 7 minutes and 17 seconds. Okay. I thank the member of the government to extend the case <coughs> with the Simmons. Here, here. Here, here. should be excluded. Why, why such an idea exists? It is because Ger German people learned from the disastrous history of Nazis and World War II, and we believe that the extra-nationalists extra are uh, surely intervening democracy and deserve the exclusion from the political arena, and, and the UN, all, all the UN states have to learn from the history of the World War II, especially in the context of the, uh, of the increasing the immigrants and so forth, and we'd like to oppose, uh, propose this motion. But uh, I'm going to talk about two points in my speech. Firstly, the why, why, the, uh, why we can say that uh, the uh, ultranationalist parties are surely intervene in democracy. And uh, secondly, why UN have to respect mountain culture, uh, cult, uh, culture. Uh, but before that, civil rebuttals. Firstly, they say that the not, uh, the, uh, the not, uh, the, even the conservatives do not naturally change and become moderate. However, we don't think it's true. Even in the Germany, uh, they, we are suffer from the Nazi history. Uh, even in the Amazon school, uh, the near Nazi exists. And so, uh, and they also say that uh, the uh, the changing will take long term. But and so, but after after long term, they can achieve the natural change. However, uh, the long term is problematic, and we cannot wait such long term for the first place. Why is that? It is because the, the waiting means that the discrimination or the oppression towards immigrants or minority continue for the such terms, and it is, it is 
it is and uh, unacceptable for for the democratic idea and so uh, the uh, oppression toward the fundamental human rights. So uh, we cannot wait, and we uh, surely have to uh, actively intervene this. And second of all, they say that uh, they can uh, after the Iris plan and the the not, not, um, the um, uh, and other nationalists uh, fail to satisfy their idea, and so they will, they will, they may become radicalized after they get banned. However, in the, even in their paradigm, they are uh, they are banning the hate speech for the first place, and they are banning all uh, all kinds of the expression and songs for the first place. So how we can satisfy even uh, even their paradigm for the first place? And you so uh, the, sorry, and so uh, the only answer was that they, uh, coming from the. Uh, Opening opposition was that they can uh, represent idea by making part par par political party. But however, the idea is uh, oppression toward uh, or the exclusion of the certain people, right? So the i.e. the expression means hate speech, and so uh, the yeah. banning of the hate speech is surely meaning the uh, the oppression toward the expression for these uh, all of the people, uh, all of all of these parties for the first place. So they are lacking consistency, and they are uh, sure. Uh, Politically nothing, and I got to go to my first point. Uh, uh, ultra-nationalists, uh, 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 the how uh, we, I, 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 I will try to elaborate how the ultra-nationalists uh, try to uh, the cut out the uh, discussion between the parties and intervene democracy. The ultra-nationalists is try to uh, uh, try to actively cut out certain kinds of the people, for example, immigrants or the foreigners or the southern race, right? So, if, 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 for example, in the case of the Nazi, the R, they say that the R people is the best, and the Jewish or the black people uh, should not be treated uh, even as a human guy for his birthday. So they were not even ignoring, but but uh, but, but actively try to uh, try to uh, try to cut down these uh, these peoples from the political arena, and they uh, they try to make the, these people silent in the political arena, and so the uh, the purpose of the democracy and is uh, is not that. Uh, uh, why the democracy needs to represent the diverse diverse party? It is because they try to gather diverse opinion, and so they uh, and make the discussion between the many diverse opinion, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but the uh, ultra nationalists uh, surely, surely intervene this process for the first place. That's why we have to actively intervene, and we can actively intervene this for uh, the existence of of the for, uh, of the ultra nationalists. And second point, why you? And have to listen and pay the respect for you. Uh, EU, EU have to respect the multicultural. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, I have three uh, points. Number one, uh, there is uh, many immigrants in other state of school, especially from the Middle East or the African, Africa, uh, Africa. And so the diverse of the diversity of the immigrant is increasing in other state of school. And, and number two, uh, the EU, uh, EU. Uh, EU uh, uh, you are in increasing the, uh, the member country now, and so they are uh, in other status quo. They are increasing uh, even the east side of the Europe countries, right? Uh, such as uh, <coughs> Lithuania and so forth. So uh, the, the, uh, the diversity of the culture of the member state is increasing in the status quo. And so, and number three, the, uh, they have to learn from the history. Uh, Uh, so uh, in under uh, in under the World War II, there was a discrimination toward the certain uh, certain kinds of people, as I said in my first first rebuttal, right? And uh, there is an the existence of the Nazis or the uh, the Italian, I forgot the name, but uh, so the, such nationalist uh, theory uh, oppress the certain kinds of the immigrants, and they uh, try to oppress uh, these. Uh, so the, the it's, uh, in that situation, the, uh, the EU countries should have the moral uh, obligation to not repeat and, to, and have to learn from such history to uh, not to repeat such uh, such uh, failure again. And so uh, they ha they have to learn from the, this history, and they they have to stop the the, the possibility to repeat by uh, by excluding such uh, such uh, such risky po risky political party and try to. Uh, make the uh, diversity between the uh, culture, and uh, so we'd like to propose uh, uh, this motion. Thank you.
the speaker spoke for the speaker spoke for six minutes and forty one seconds. And I'd like to invite the member of opposition to extend the case with the instruments here. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, the society moves back and forward, but actually and gradually we can change the society in our society. If they never change the idea in their stance, the world is full of discrimination, even in the status quo. But it's not the case. There was a, in the past discrimination towards the black people, however now the discrimination is gradually solved. We say there is a possibility and room for those people to change their opinion and political idea, even though they have the very solid basis of idea. Idea. It doesn't mean they never ever change that idea, Mr. Speaker. We say from the closing opposition how they can they, they can change the society, uh, they can change the idea because by seeing the discussion and through the discussion and long history makes them recognize it's no use to keep on that idea because the fundamental goal of themselves is to change the society. However, once they notice it's impossible, of course they have to stop in order to live in the society and to all together. This is why we say the closing opposition is better than respect. Two, uh, two things in my speech. Firstly, I rebut what the previous speaker has mentioned. Secondly, I'm going to bring you three pieces of extensions. Number one, we talk about even if the day those parties do not get satisfied, how we can expunge those groups from society. Secondly, minority folks would occur because of the discussion. Thirdly, comparison between the status quo and after passing this policy, because in the status quo, of course, there is a, like, uh, almost like hate speech and people get mentally suffer. However, we do not say that radicalization is less important than those mental damage. We say the physical damage should be avoided. So, but before moving on to the extension, firstly, let me engage with the government side. Number one, they mentioned that the hate speech is done within a framework of the status quo. Cool. Mr. Speaker, it is totally not the case, because if it's too far to the extent of the hate speech, we have already banned those hate speech, Mr. Speaker. It's totally out of debate in the first place. Moreover, secondly, there is an ECJ, European Court of Justice, um, that which means they have the capability to judge if those parties try to pass legislation which strongly focusing on depriving those rights of the minorities, of course, those European Court of Justice start to deny those policies in, a, in the status quo. There is a function in the EU, even in the status quo, we do not say those kind of too excessive hate speech is existing in the status quo. Secondly, they mentioned that those parties try to suppress the freedom of speech of those minorities and actually try to remove those minorities of the immigrants, like Roma people, from their society. Mr. Speaker, we have to consider the analysis that international criticism works effectively because countries have to carry the international status, Madam Mr. Speaker. They mentioned that the French does not change. However, after they get criticized by the other countries, of course, they have to change and moderate their idea because the country have to carry the international status in order for the politics or in order for diplomacy or economic trade, etc., etc., Mr. Speaker. Therefore, international criticism is clearly working. There is no logic to say that those countries not cha uh, change their attitude in the first place. From the closing government, uh, government we heard that in the parliament, nationalist parties intervene in the process of discussion and they deny those minorities, Mr. Speaker. It is not true for two reasons. Number one, if they only just screen and do not obey the rule of the parliament, of course they cannot get the support, Mr. Speaker. If they only screen, those minorities are bad and bad and bad and they do not obey the rule, Mr. Speaker. They cannot get the support from other parliament, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, in the first place, they do not have the incentive to disturb the discussion in the first place. Moreover, secondly, of course there is a chairman to check whether or not the, uh, the discussion is proceeding well, of course chairman can stop those auto nationalist party to say for freely whatever they want Mr. Speaker, the argument is very unrealistic in the first place. 
Second, uh, fourthly, they mentioned that the historical obligation is very important in today's debate. Mr. Speaker, we concede this point. This debate is about whether or not we can increase the possibility to make those minorities suffer more, or we can make the possibility to make those minorities suffer less, Mr. Speaker. So we concede the analysis that the historical obligation is there. Of course, we say yes. However, this debate is about how we can change the society forward toward this historical obligation. Therefore, we do not think the argument is very strong. Moving on to the extensions. Firstly, about how we can expand those groups from society. Mr. Speaker, they mentioned that those people cannot get satisfied in the status quo. Mr. Speaker, we concede this analysis. Of course, they do not get satisfied. However, we have to see this discussion lasted for a long time, and through discussion, they have to understand that they cannot change the idea of citizens, they cannot change the society. Why is that? Because the fundamental and ultimate goal of those political parties is to change the society and expand those citizens from their society, Mr. Speaker. However, through the discussion, they can see that the citizens do not listen to those voices of the ultra-nationalist party. They have to give up the persuading those citizens in the first place, Mr. Speaker. And look at the case of the Action Francis in France. Of course, in the past, it was very discriminatory, Action Francis. However, it lasted for a long time, and now it's almost disbanded, Mr. Speaker. This fact shows that those political parties can easily disband. It, 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 after a long discussion, they can see there is no need and no necessity or the workability to change the society's idea. Look at the case of the British National Parliament. Of course, British National Parliament is very, very far like political party. However, they are hated by the citizens in the United Kingdom from my point of information. This United Kingdom, uh, this British National Parliament is also going to own the same way, Mr. Speaker. They will in the future give up persuading those citizens no thank you to, um, to, the, to, to their idea. And moreover, secondly, the party members also start to disband, Mr. Speaker. Why is that? Because they cannot get shit, Mr. Speaker. If they cannot get shit, which means they cannot support those parties as well, uh, more and more. They have to change their idea as long as they live as a politician. They have to live as a politician, which means if they are in that party, they cannot get seat, they cannot get money, etc. We think this is totally problematic. So in this situation, we can see the moderation within the status quo. But after passing this policy, this never happens because they still continue to believe they can change the idea of citizens because there is no discussion. They still continue to believe that they can change their idea to the power of political party. Party. This is why they radicalize and they go to the terrorism, etc. We think this is the logic from our side of the house. Moving on to the second issue, according to this logic, we say after discussion, citizens can notice that minorities are suffering, Mr. Speaker. Minorities need the help from other citizens. This is why uh, international uh, Amnesty International is moving forward to helping those countries in the status quo because of the discussion with Roma people. However, after passing this policy, because there is no discussion, citizens do not pay to those citizens. Citizens don't pay to attention to those minorities, we think this is also serious. So lastly about the comparison, we say in the status quo there is a mental damage, however after passing this post proposal, because those people cannot give up, those people do not give up. This is why they resort to the violence, they resort to the last way, which is the radicalization of the political idea, because this is the last way that left for them. We think this is totally problematic, compare these two factors, status quo is better, because we can ch gradually change the society, even though it's moving forward and back, we're very proud to oppose. The speaker spoke for 7 minutes and 18 seconds. Within 7 minutes. Here, here. We think that today's opposition side, part in, in opposition side paradigm, we think that those kinds of well radical parties cannot do anything for their aid. In their paradigm, there is no discrimination, the discriminatory policy comes from those kind of parties, and there will be no hate speech comes from those kind of parties. Ladies and gentlemen, then where and what will be the re meaning and reasons those, of those kind of parties' existence? Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah. there is a lot of say. There will be there will be discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is a discussion, 
It actually means that those kinds of radical parties are actually voicing out to in, inside of the society or inside of the parliament. Yeah. Doesn't it mean that there will be hate speeches towards a lot of people in the society, ladies and gentlemen? We think that there's in their side, even in their side of the house, there's no meaning of the existence of the multinational uh, those kinds of radical parties in the status quo. This is the reason why we cannot actually accept the harms harms or harms comes from the whole opposition side. And moving on to the classes. We have three classes in today's debate. Sit down. First, I'm going to talk about why why we have to talk about EU. And second, well, I'm going to talk about why we have to talk about uh, radical parties. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about the harms or which about the radicalizing we don't think it is inevitable. First, about EU. Ladies and gentlemen, my opening government side clearly told you about the analysis of EU that actually compromised it uh, composed with a lot of com countries. And my partner clearly el elaborated reasons. Firstly, we, we told you that EU have a lot of immigrants in the first places, like Turkish go to the France countries, or the Eastern European con Eastern European countries are actually moving on to Western East European countries. And secondly, my partner really told you that newly entered nations come from, come from Eastern Europe, for example, Slavian, a lot of Slavian countries, where Kazakhstan, or whatever those kind of countries, are actually moving into the, and, and, and actually actively entering to the EU, which has Latin, Latin reasons or a lot of different reasons, come from a lot of different reasons. We think that this kind of, because of this kind of reason, the EU have clear justification to actually care about the correlation of the whole kinds of reasons, whether or not they're Latin, whether or not they're Slav, whether or not they're Jewish, or whatever. There is no engagement comes from both opposition side in first places. And second, my great personal read tells you about the moral obligation comes from the history of European nations, ladies and gentlemen. For example, in the U World War II, um, as my great personal read tells you as an example of Nazis, they actually, the, they actually provided the idea that Aryan uh, 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 people is the Bad and Jewish is just skunk, and they cannot be, and they cannot live as a human. And we think that this this kind of idea actually proceed to the massacre of toward those kind of Jewish people and discrimination toward Jewish people. And many kinds of nations in European countries and EU countries I actually learn from those kinds of learned from those kinds of experiences. This is the reason why we think that those kind of people countries have a lot of moral obligation not to discriminate those kind of people and not to proceed and not to make proceed procedure of supporting the m m ultra radical parties in the status quo. Do you have any point? Go on. Okay, so if they understand a historical obligation, citizens have the idea discrimination is totally bad. Why do they support those ultra-nationalist parties? Ladies and gentlemen, we think that those kinds of citizens are uh, those kind of parties are not actually caring about nowadays uh, status quo voting rate. I will explain in my second argument. So moving on to second criteria about most uh, ultra nationalist parties. Ladies and gentlemen, opening government clearly tells you that those kinds of most of those kinds of radical parties are actually against democracy. And there this kind of, in, in those kind of paradigm we could we could Weaker people cannot speak, cannot speak in this kind of paradigm. And closing government actually and and plus and my point point of information toward the opening opposition clearly explain the reason of the why those kinds of ultra nationalist parties are actually against democracy. It is because the democracy and parties meaning of the existence of the parties is about gathering a lot of diverse idea come from every kind of citizen and every kind of group. And we think that it is necess necessary to regulate the free politics policies to protect the free policies in the first place, to protect the idea, diverse idea even, for, even from the Jewish and even from the Arab people or even from European people or whatever this kind of immigrant is. This kind of diverse idea only comes from in our paradigm, not from the ultra-nationalist ultra paradigm. And we think that this kind of parties are actually against the idea of democracy. This, are, this can be the reason to actually we can ban this kind of idea from the politics in the first place. Closing government, closing opposition to you. Even for uh, even for radical party, they they don't try to deny the discussion itself. But ladies and gentlemen, we think that those kind of parties, radical, uh, those kind of parties, aid itself is to get against this kind of discussion from the Jewish or and so on. As long as we uh, actually acknowledge those kind of aim, actual aim of those kind of parties, we can actually do the regulation toward the parties. And there's an opening opposition say there will be social discussion and check from the citizen by voting will be working. And closing the opposition actually will bought those kind of idea and say that there will there will be changes. But ladies and gentlemen, this kind of ultra nationalist party would not change even if the checking of the voting system. Why is that? Because they, those kind of parties are actually doesn't have any kind of motivation to to get 
share the, the book in with mod moderating themselves. But they have clear motivation to aim to change the citizen, not themselves, but change the citizens into ultra-nationalists in the first place. So they happily accept and ignore the low voting rate toward themselves in the status quo, but actually they try and try again to aim to change all those kind of people in the society. Closing up with just uh, the international criticism will work. But ladies and gentlemen, what you're talking about is about one small minor ultra nationalist party. Why those kind of parties can actually care, sit down, or actually care about actually care about those kind of international criticism, even if they are not representing the country and that they, even if they are not representing the, the diplomatic diplomacy of their themselves uh, themselves countries. But so we think that those kind of idea doesn't stand. Moving on to the third criteria about benefit and harm. There is a lot of us say that they will radicalize because there will be no booster. But my point of information clearly accepted and clearly banning it because we even if in opposition paradigm, there will be no root for the believers of the ultra nationalists to express their idea and express their aim. And they cannot do anything even in their paradigm. We think that there will be no difference even in the status quo and after plan. We think that there's a lot of us didn't show us uh, didn't show us those kind of impact. And there's a lot of state. They will, because they are well, the citizen cannot cannot give a, 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 after taking the proposal, citizen will not give attention because there will be no discussion. But ladies and gentlemen, within the opening government, opening opposition idea, I play clearly claiming and both contradicting because if there is a radicalized group and actually doing accidents or massacre or whatever this kind of thing was happen, citizen will see it and citizen will be checked in. So we think that there will be no problem in the radicalizing system. So we think that it is good for the citizen. So this is the reason why we have to protect the democracy by banning those kind of parties in the parliament's area. Thank you. The speaker spoke for 7 minutes and 24 seconds. Now I'd like to invite the last speaker, opposition whip, to sum up this debate within 7 minutes. Here, here. Minority 
Okay, however, however, ladies and gentlemen, the, even now, the head, all of head of page at the bar, so that's why the, the even international even party doesn't, doesn't, doesn't voice out the, the head of page or so forth. And, and today, and today operation, all of, all, all of France is the, the importance of the discussion, the important discussion about the, about the, 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 the internationalism party or so forth. The, sorry, the, my partner Craig told you the, 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 uh, so, uh, the society can change, can change it by the, the citizens' power. The, my partner to, uh, already, already told you about the example of the black people and so forth. And, uh, and uh, after, after the, and after the after voice out the international liberal party's opinion and the international nationalist party shows the, the shows yeah. discriminate for the for the minority all of citizens can all of citizens can find the find the the existence of the discrimination and and moreover after after this after this discrimination they appear in the society, the many other countries criticize the deflective the, the existence and moreover NGO and Amnesty International can help these minority people and so if that's if the only way uh, that is the only way if if uh, they never the voice out Amnesty International or the NGO uh, never never yeah. never Find out the 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 discrimination about the nationalism nationalism party and and moreover my partner my partner already my, my partner already told you that many students can get can gather and the many the many students can show and uh, can 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 do the movement can can do the the social movement so. I can show the social movements, so that's why the 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 the, the society or or the, the the society can change about and moreover the three operation side is the to, the uh, the uh, response is the importance of the discussion and my 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 super partner already <laughs> told you. <laughs> Here, here. My friend Bob already told you that the closed community is the so harmful, so harmful, so harmful. The closed, closed community go to the extreme radical and the and the sometimes the doing terror, terrorism or so forth. However, ladies and gentlemen, the the, the if the both other their opinion, the uh, all of parties uh, and even the internationalist party is that uh, even the international party or uh, the these type of politician elected by students, that's why the the nah. the, the support supported by the citizens is the necessity. That's why the if their their if their the opinion is the so so radical the many wow. many politicians live to live from the a party and the many many students the the criticize them and 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 the and the, and the, and the so, so my partner always told you that after they criticized by the many of the students or the other country or the NGO or the Amnesty International, that so they can modify their staff and and after the long term the 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 international party has disappeared. The so deep, deep example is coming from the operation the many times and and. And uh, only this way, that so we can, we can, uh, we can minimize the harm, harm or the suffer for the minorities. If for the, 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 that's why we we are proud to oppose this motion. Thank you. The speaker spoke for six minutes and fifty-eight seconds. And thank you for your all cooperation. Thank you.